Um, I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to come and join us this afternoon. I'd also like to welcome some staff and then staff of um, MTL and then students as well. So for those of you that are new to the Discourse Cafe initiative, um, what we do for Discourse Cafe is we invite prominent South Africans to come and speak with students in a small setting like this for students to actually see that these prominent South Africans are just regular people like you and I, and it's something for students to aspire to as well. So today I'll be introducing our guest, as you all can see, is Professor Russell Bortman. Just a brief introduction of some of the accolades that Professor Bortman has had over the past couple of years. Professor Bortman received his doctorate in theology in 1994 from the University of the Western Cape. He's also a member of the Ethics Society of South Africa and of the former chairperson of the Theological Society of Southern Africa. He then went on to be the Dean of the Faculty of Religion and Theology at the University of the Western Cape from 1994 to 1999. And he joined Sunwash University in 2000 as a professor in the Department of Practical Theology and Mythology. Um, appointed as Vice Rector in 2002 and then Deputy Vice Chancellor in 2002 to 2007. Appointed as Rector in 2006 until presently and then Vice Chancellor in 2007 until present. Um, I'd like to introduce Professor Russell Gorton. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here and to be part of the Discourse Cafe. And, uh, and I, I was, I'll say a few things about the twists and turns of my uh, life uh, in, in leadership and then just have the open discussion. Is that right? The, um, the, the most difficult thing to really think of is that the future belongs to you. Because you, it is so easy to get stuck in the present and so easy to get pulled back by the past. So that you have to make a, cons a big consideration of, of the idea of what is there, what is calling me. And uh, now, you, you know people have ways of thinking about something calling them, and they, you can say that you think you are being called by, by, uh, by a God or by God, or you can simply understand that it's actually in that future there is a lot waiting on you, and it wants you, and it wants you there in time. So the, the most difficult thing that I think I had to learn to understand, I always worked with the idea that you, as, as a leader in any situation, you must accept that everything is as a temporary meaning. There isn't something like the permanency of, of things. And it's sometimes a good thing because you do things and then somebody comes after you and do different things and then you don't. You mustn't take it too personally, and you must be able to move on to do something else. And the whole idea is, is how to secure that what you do in your time is definitive about the future. And that is, for me, the most important thing. It's about how do we see that future, and how do we see it coming to life in what we're doing now. So uh, I've done interesting things around that with that whole concept. The one is that uh, I, was, uh, I was a leader at this, at, in the student council of uh, the University of the Western Cape in 19, I was elected in 1975, as you know, you we elected the year before. And then in 1976, the whole Soweto riots broke out and people were shot. And the laws uh, about enforcing Afrikaans in all schools became a very big debate. And uh, the resident of the Western Cape was an Afrikaans speaking, generally Afrikaans speaking university. And then the, we had a me in the meeting, people, some people got up and said, look here, we, we know what happened in Soweto yesterday. It is now time for us to stand up in solidarity with Soweto. And so I put up my hand and I said, no, Chair, I think we shouldn't stand up in solidarity with Soweto. We must stand up for our position on apartheid. It is a totally different thing because solidarity lasts three months 
maybe, if it's, if it's long enough or two weeks. But the real understanding of how do you see this future, what role do you have to play in it, is an important one because it is a serious big thing. It's, uh, you, you don't take on the army of a country without thinking carefully through it. And that was the most difficult thing because then the whole meeting booed me down. And then I kept, went back and I went back until they decided, right, okay, we, put, we get the committee, we're going to have a symposium for a whole week, we're going to get some people to speak, Jake Scherwell and another, a number of other people, and we think carefully through what, in which direction do we want to take this university, how do we see the future of the university. And once you get that picture and you get the picture with other people, it is easier to then say you lead in that direction. Lead, leaders, you get two types of leaders. The, the, there are many more types, but generally, you get leaders who can see the destination, and then there are leaders who can take you to the destination, if somebody knows what the destination is going to be. So uh, you sometimes have to know what type of leader you are, and then you have to be able to know that even if you see the destination, you have to secure that, that, you, have, that you have enough people supporting that direction. And sometimes if you don't see the future, get people who, will, who, who can do that, who can do the hard work, who can do the studies, who can uh, go and, and, and do the reading and bring back and take it seriously when they bring it back and say, look, this is what this future holds for us. And then you begin to craft the route towards it. Uh, and it, is, it has been challenging for me in, uh, uh, at that university with, when we suddenly had the 76 riots. It has been challenging for me when I was in the leadership of the uniting of the, the old Dutch Reform Mission Church, which was the, the, the you know, the Dutch Reform Church was divided, separated into its racial groups. We still have some that's not sorted out yet. But uh, the, when the black church and the colored church decided to become one, I was in the leadership of the, of the, of, of the Dutch Reformation Church. And it was a very tough thing to do, to do it, it within four years, get a unity done of two big churches. It's not simple, it's hard work, and it's difficult holding people together who actually don't know each other and getting people to accept that the future is going to be different for everybody, and that it's going to be good. It was a tough and difficult thing to do. Uh, and then uh, the, and we got the unity done in a sense, and then uh, the year when the unity happened, I took up the job at the, at the University of the Western Cape, and in a sense left the church, uh, my leadership role in the churches at that time. So I, I told myself, I'm not going to be part of the leadership of the United Church. I want to be part of working up to the unity, and once that's done, uh, I want to step away from it. Because you need different kind of leaders to solidify and stabilize something. And then I thought, now, my, my next job is in, in the academic world, and I went to UWC. Came from UWC to Stellenbosch, uh, and here I, 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 I realized that the, the, this, the importance of this university for this nation and its future. And uh, I've made a commitment to work for that uh, because I see this university as a big role play in the future of this country uh, in a different way than, uh, than we had in, seen in the past. But I see also that every student here at this university will find themselves in this interesting situation, that they come from a university that people look at and say, this university made a very big contribution. These people are from that place, and they will have to help us understand how we take this country into the future. So we will have to struggle with some of the difficult issues. We'll have to learn to talk to each other even if we are scared to do that, and we'll have to learn to, to be leaders for a, a whole nation, not parts of it. Because the day will come when all these small parties will disappear, the day will come. And on that day, the big thing will be what kind of leaders will step forward and lead this country uh, 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 to the future that belongs to this country. 
So I'm working for you and uh, for your future now, and it's an interesting job. Very interesting. <laughs> Five minute break. Everybody can just get some snacks, get something to drink today, and then we'll reconvene for a question and answer session with the director. Okay. Oh, we'll be commencing with the second archive discourse campaign now. So, this is an opportunity for anyone that has any questions for Professor Russell to ask those questions now, and it allows the space for dialogue and conversation as well. So, anyone with questions, more than welcome to go ahead. Um, yeah, I stand for. Yes, uh, um, during your opening discussion, you mentioned that that you um, see Stanislav as playing a very crucial role and making a very good contribution um, in the future of South Africa. And I was just wondering what sort of role you see the university as playing when you consider that people often see style of martial arts in life as a bit of a bubble, sort of um, living in a whole little world and not really um, aware of what's going on in the bigger picture. I, I come from, uh, I, was, I did all my studies at the university, you know, close by Western Cape, as I told you, and Western Cape was a bubble when I stood there for for the, uh, for the SRC. And uh, I remember the big issues that, that we were worried about was, I, I promised them that I'd secure that, uh, that we have a post office on campus, uh, that uh, certain things would be delivered faster, and so on, and, it, and then it's talking about how do you, how are you going to be a leader to make these people's lives more comfortable while they are here. And then you realize, but then when 1976 happened, then you realize, but this is not the job of a university. A university is to ask questions about the universe, about the universal questions that's going on around it, in the country, on the continent, and so on. But it was that shock experience of 1976 that we suddenly had to worry about, think about Soweto and think carefully about what's happening there, think carefully how that impacts us, uh, what impact it would have on us, etc. That is what I think is the big challenge for student life at Stellenbosch. And it is not, it is, I think we see enough leaders, I've seen enough leaders in the past years coming forward beginning to broaden the, the horizon of, 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 our, of our student life and, and of the work that we do as a university. And I see more people bringing in important conversations and I think the Discourse Cafe is, is, is an important part of that. But also other conversations, it is, it is when, you, when you feel that you're in a bubble, you have to bring people from outside the bubble into it. And it opens up. And very soon you realize that it wasn't a bubble. It was just an illusionary bubble. Because you're part of a big, big reality. And it's going to become part of your life. And, and it will impact your life. And it doesn't help that you say, for now, it is my parents' problem. Because it is your problem. It's your future. And you have to begin to consider that future seriously as the future of the country and the role you want to play in it. I tell people that, that I think that uh, we, we, we need to secure that more people at this university, and, I'm, and I think now specifically of, our, of black students, should think of themselves as leaders and, 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 and develop their leadership skills. This is a great place to do that. This is a great place to do that. Because there are great people, you will be challenged to the core but it will not be simply simple populistic uh, uh, political rhetoric. It will be really hard conversations, and we need that, and we need people to lead that. But it is, it is a bubble that, uh, that won't last, and uh, I think uh, the work that's being done on the bubble is going to turn it around and keep us, uh, by help us all feel part of what is outside of the bubble. But the, the big thing about Stellenbosch is, is that as a university, we are part of a town that lives in a bubble. 
and it is the most difficult thing to, 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 for me. Uh, my biggest worry is that we, that we are in the process of uh, selecting and, and, and bringing in poor students that are very, very good. It's, if you get in here, very good. But the, the difference is opportunity and, and money. That is the big difference. So how to, how to secure when people walk the, the streets of this town as poor people. How this town is actually um, can, can have a negative effect on the way they see themselves in their own lives or a positive effect. In the sense, if you, if you are very poor and your big challenge is what do you eat next time and you walk down the streets and everybody's sitting outside with a glass of wine and then you can't even imagine how that is possible. Just like the people who see these big cars passing them by there and, um, in Kailicha. Can't you don't imagine what is going on here in, around you? But it's, uh, I, I really hope that, uh, that we'll have more of those poor students that will hold on to the opportunity that this gives them, because this is the opportunity out of their own bubble. Very interesting, because Stellenbosch as a whole is generally not as active, at least like on an international level, yeah. as the other universities might yeah. be. Uh, like, for example, like the Nismas protest that happened mm. in the beginning of the year. Yeah. That really wasn't um, something that was on the Stellenbosch conscious for the most part. Um, I'm very interested. I don't know. Um, I think many people are a little bit uncertain how to really um, uh, get involved, do something, or I don't know what it is. Was was it just the fact that we're in this bubble, which we're waiting for? Oh. No, we, uh, no. It's not the fact that we're living in the bubble. It's because we try. We're running a very efficient system behind all of this. Very efficient system. We went to NISFAS, we got a 40 million rand additional money. What we didn't do is what other universities did, was to offer a student a NISFAS bursary without having cleared it with NISFAS. And that is what we did. So every, every person who received the bursary, NISFAS bursary, knew that I have that bursary because the money is in the university's pocket already. Those other people, and many of them, we had a meeting with Nesfaz the other day, many of them were promised before Nesfaz told the universities, but the money isn't there to do it. Nesfaz had grown with 30% over the past three, four years, and it is a big challenge for the country to see how they're going to take it further from, as it was 1.5 billion rand to now 9 billion. Probably next year, 20 billion. 10 billion, excuse me. And that is going to be the big challenge. And we'll see a lot more protests. We'll see a lot more uh, in many, at many universities unless universities know what they're promising a student. So that is partly our thing. So you don't have people who feel, oh my goodness me, I don't have, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I have to go home. I have to pick up or something uh, because the system we run a very efficient system behind everything, but now the difficulty is for people to think if something happens nationally or somewhere else that it may be also impacting on all of us together, or we can think about how do we, how do we make a connection to what, what people feel nationally, and it is tough, but those are the big questions that, that, we, that we have to ask ourselves over time, because it's a problem of, of of having a, an efficient machine. So it all comes down to management. It all comes down if management must do its own calculation of the risks for students as much as they do it for themselves. <laughs> the year before. Not when the student turns up. I think that also makes that to the which must be like chance that they're going to follow with it because it seems almost as if the knee-jerk action when there's a problem is just throw more money at it. Yeah. When, um, like, we look at our education budget, which is insanely high, and yeah. yet our um, education levels are not that good. So it's really, it's not just about the money itself, it's mm. about how it's used yes. and 
or just the structure behind it, which I think is South Africa as a whole doesn't really um, focus as much on that aspect yeah. as we should. Yes, and people get angry when they see money being wasted. Yeah. And other people stop giving money. And that is, that is why we, people keep on asking me, why are we successful in attracting for, uh, donors to the university for the things that we do by and large around many issues, social issues. And, uh, and the reason is simply because they, they come, they send people from America to first check the financial system of the university before they send the cent to you. And that is it. If you, if you miss that boat, you've missed it. So the leadership, and that is what people must remember, is leadership is not only about getting up and making the speech. Leadership is about securing that everybody that comes to this university has a fair chance to be successful, and secondly, that that person is motivated enough to do that, and thirdly, at a university like this, that the levels of success are such that when they walk out with the qualification, that everybody would want them. You know how it is with many universities in our country. They, students walk with their degrees on the streets. And that is, that is the thing that we must also change. Um, Fultus Williams. Um, I'm going to be graduate at the Institute. Um, like the said, a lot of students are walking on stage with degrees. They don't have to easily add attributes to, to get a job. What the professor say is the attributes that Stanford University brings for a PhD graduate compared to other students from other universities. The, in the first place, it's uh, when, when a graduate walks away from Stellenbosch, people know about that graduate that we didn't lower the, the bar for them to get in in the first place. Actually, we upped the bar. If you get in, it is a higher bar than almost anywhere else. Our competition is with, with UCT and with Rhodes when it comes to how high, how high that bar is to get in. And we do that, people think that we do it for reasons to keep people out, but it is because we, there is a drop in the first year called kind of marks when you come from school to university. And your first shock is your first exam. And then you have to begin to learn how to function at the university, not as if you are a glorified <laughs> learner from a school. So how to get that done is the big thing. And so they know people have done that, they got traction. And they have, they have been, they've been, they've been in a place where they were challenged. And one thing that is why we work so hard on inclusiveness, that the people must know that they've been challenged with questions around inclusiveness. So if you take them in, they won't go on Twitter and create a big risk for your company. Because they, have, they know what it means to live in a diverse society. They know what the different issues are. And they, 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 it goes through their heads and get organized around all these issues that they are aware of in, in the country. And the, and the, and the big thing is that, that, uh, that uh, they, and this is what, with, what we're working hard on and that you can feel around you, is that people will know that these people, when they come from South Bosch University, they, they didn't go through a process where they were taught how to be selfish and how to look only at self-interest. They've gone through a process where they were challenged to ask the questions about the social role that they have and the social impact that they can make in the society. And it will be, on the long run, it will be for the good of this country. Uh, because it's, uh, you're supposed to, 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 to get a salary that is 400 times higher than, than somebody who just finished matric with you. So it is a very big difference, and the question is that is, that is how we will build our hospitals, that is how we will, how we will improve our education. And, and this is, this is when, when, when I look at you, I see the future in that bigger context, and I think people will get the feeling that, yes, these people know that they are part of a very big reality, and they will play a positive role in it. And then the last question, uh, what, what gap does the professor still think that we still have for our graduate? We're not teaching at some much universities, oh. not, not giving to the students before they, they leave the university. I think 
If I ask you, uh, if I would ask you today, how many of you in your program have seen a module on diversity, I would be shocked to get the response to that. Just a few, you see. That is, that, is the, that, is the, that is one of the big challenges. Stellenbosch University still sees, Stellenbosch, Stellenbosch, some of the academics at Stellenbosch should be challenged by the students of Stellenbosch to begin to ask themselves, do they understand that diversity, inclusivity, on the one hand, is the university's own mission? And do they understand that it doesn't, it, you don't just wake up one morning and then you understand it and you live with it. That there must be curriculum for it and that you must understand how, if you are going to be a medical doctor, how you will be affected by that and what are the implications of that and what, what it would mean to, 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 uh, to, to learn to work in a surgery where you will face that diversity. Uh, I am scared when I think about that part. We do good work, we have, we'll have good conversation, but it will be a conversation among the elite of the intellectuals of, of, of the country. The question is whether they have programs that help them understand that out there are the people that you're going to lead further, and they have, they have a diverse, they, they represent a diversity of communities and of people and of individuals, but also of uh, ideas. And how to work with it, how to work with it is going to be the big challenge for you. That is the gap that I see we have, because we don't create uh, we don't create the spaces in which you can deal with it as an academic, rational question. <coughs> Not as a question about others, but a question about otherness and being yourself in that bigger context. And, it, and there's a lot of studies going on in the world. And we don't get them in our, into our programs yet. The other big thing that I see is, uh, is, is absent is uh, the, is, is around um, entrepreneurship. I think uh, at our university we do great work with entrepreneurship, but we still see the entrepreneur as some individual that stands out and is an un We don't see every person that's here as, a, as an entrepreneur. So we, we don't work with that, we don't help with that. We have a few problems. It's the one thing is, is to understand that when when, when people, people come out of systems and social systems, family systems, and we have to do a lot of work to, to secure that we get there. I, I told the people in Kaimandi once, I understand that they are angry at the Somalis and that they throw them out, but I don't understand that they don't take over the shops. So I don't understand that. There's, there's the shops now standing there, nobody's taking it over. So what does it mean? Now you, now you pay for a taxi to go buy bread. In, in the past, you could have walked down the street to buy bread. And it's, uh, it's, it's, there's something that we must do in our nation, and we have a lot of work, and our university must, <coughs> must pull its weight in that context. So those are the two major issues, and then with that, you deal in, in diversity, you deal with gender and all other issues of diversity. It's not race. Race is a small part of diversity, and it is and race is actually the, um, is, uh, race is, is an illusion, eh? it's, it's uh, because it was, it, it's, it does not really exist. But what exists is that, that, that there are women and there are males, and that, that, that there are issues there that we, have, that we can understand. There are religions and we can understand it and so on. But it's race is the smallest part of the diversity question that we have to deal with in this country. But we have to deal with it because the race line and the poverty line is still too close to each other. Yeah, yeah, I can take you for five more minutes. I'm, I'm driving up to the hotel here, so it's, I can get there in five minutes, can I? When you get me there in five minutes, all right. <laughs> but ten, ten minutes okay. then. Okay, so last two, yeah. 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 Uh, um, at the FBZ Institute, we have this video that was compiled for um, 
the leaders conference last year and it's a compilation of speeches by various leaders in South Africa and in the world and there are two speeches that's, that stand out for me and the one is something that you said and one is something that Chancellor Rupert said I think it is inauguration and I, I, I don't almost quote you but I think you said something along the lines of um, you have to lose money to make money when you make money you have to use it to to make the world a better place, oh. more or less. Oh. And then Professor Rupert, uh, sorry, Dr. Rupert oh. says something along the lines of, um, there's a change happening and we need to be at the forefront of that change oh. and show the world how valuable state of university is. I think your speech alluded more towards the HOPE project, oh. but what do you think is being done at university right now to keep in line with those statements that were made by the Sultan, Dr. Rupert? The, yes, the, 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 the big thing is it's that that what I learned is the toughest thing in South Africa and it's going to be tougher for, with, with black wealthy people than even with the white wealthy people because on that side you don't even have the idea that maybe I owe it to the society. But the thing is it's that people don't know how to uh, how to be how to, how to get how to let their money go, how to let go of money. People don't like that. They, they think you can hoard it forever and the, it can grow this heap and it's nice. It's not nice. It is, um, but, you, but if you have it, then, the, then, then you can actually do a lot more in a society. And you can do a lot more, for instance, to give bursaries to universities. And, the, and that challenge, I, I think we still don't take out to our society enough, and we must do a lot more than that. People who are rich know that they got rich after they, have, they set up 17 companies, one of them made it, the rest are gone, and they lost more money than in the beginning. They got rich later on or so, but they then don't get to that point where they say, no, since that is how you get rich, so how do I secure that there are more people who not necessarily may get rich, but who get the opportunity to build their own future? And yes, we do a lot of work. I must tell you, we're trying with entrepreneurship, we're trying with, uh, uh, with, uh, with challenging students with big new ideas that they have and to bring it forward to see how we support it. But it is about thinking, helping people to understand that at the end the big question is when you, when you die, the question is not how much do you have in the bank. That is not the question. It's, and then it is too late to ask the other questions. Um, I'm from um, and I want to ask, I know the university is working towards the goal of 50% white and 50% non-white. I think the year is 2016. Um, I want to know what is the university's management doing to ensure that we reach that goal and what is it doing to ensure that STEM, which is accommodative enough yeah. and conducive enough for 50% percent my one students? Yeah. We, we, we are doing a lot of work and, in, and, it's, and it's also difficult because it is uh, to secure that, you, that when you do that, that you, that you also create at the same time a welcoming culture for everybody. Um, I can tell you quickly a story. When, uh, when, when I came to Stellenbosch University, it was with 30, 43 black students from the University of the Western Cape was at, in the, because I was a teacher as part uh, of the Uniting Reformed Churches training there. And uh, the university just went bad on theology, so I, I told the church it's time to leave. They asked me, where are you going to? So I said, there's only one other university, it's Stellenbosch, to go to. So uh, we had a very big fight. But when we came to Stellenbosch, the first thing that people said is that the walls don't speak to us. And then you realize that whatever, however high the level of, of uh, excellence is, it doesn't, it doesn't help the rest of the things. It doesn't change the rest. So you have to focus on, on, the, on the things that, that gives you a feeling of a place, gives you a feeling of connectedness, that gives you a feeling that you can be yourself in that space. You don't have to become somebody else or like somebody else. And that is still a, a difficult challenge for us, but we are working very hard on se securing that we, that we tackle those things. We have done a lot of work in the hostels over the past years, and you can pick it up in, in certain areas because it is, 
we didn't start when we said we want to have 50-50. We started before that because you have to create the environment. And we are in a good space now, uh, but we are going to meet that 50-50. It's, uh, uh, and, it's, and it's not, it is a magical thing. You know, it is, it is the way you work as a leader. You'll say, you use a figure 50-50, then people begin to worry about it. If you don't have a figure, they don't worry about it. So now people think, oh my goodness me, what is it going to mean? How are we going to do that? How is it going to affect this residence? How is it going to affect the whole university and its values and its past and its future? So that 50 50 is in the first place there so that people can think. It's in the second place there so that people will feel welcome when they come to this university. Uh, you referred earlier to a university being a place of universal education, or maybe I'm pushing the words a bit now. Uh, but so, if we look at the word uni universal, that's from that, it yeah. means holistic and universal and so on. And uh, I'm concerned that certain directions of study at the university are becoming so specialized that people are starting to think in silos. So yeah. they're so focused on getting their degree and getting a specific set of knowledge that they don't get a broader perspective. And uh, I know uh, last year I think there was a proposal of actually making a year of humanity study mandatory for everyone in the university. Mm. Uh, I was wondering what your thoughts are on that and how mm. we can counter that to mm. silo as Yeah. It is, it is the, the, uh, the, the big difficult challenge. It's, uh, I think it is right that more students should be exposed to this to studies in the humanities, uh, and uh, the, the the strong professionalization that happened in the past, I think, should be rethought. And we have difficult debates with the professional bodies at the Higher Education South Africa at ESA because they force actually they prescribe the program the modules, the work that must be done in there, but for their understanding of how the discipline worked 100 years, years ago. But the disciplines are not going to work like that in future. It is, it is the people who will have the great social skills that will lead companies in future. It will not be the people who can count so well. It is going to change. But they must know enough of the counting side. They must be able to read a uh, a budget and a state and a, and a financial statement and understand that. So do you have that, but the question is whether you need it in such a narrow way. I think that is not needed. So what the first challenge that, that people have accepted in the professional bodies was that we need more ethics in those programs. And that was the first step because they, they got the shock of their lives in the year 2008 and realized what is going on here, these people didn't worry about their own values, they just worried about their own pockets, and so it is a problem. But now, in future, I think we're going to see more of the, of the people who came into humanities going into leadership roles. But it is this thing that is important. While you are in this process where disciplines are, are being determined by the professional bodies, if you are in one of them, remember that issue. Remember that because there's enough of the humanities out there to learn about and to read about and to study about or to interact with. And you have enough students in the residence aware to, to get an understanding of how their brains work. And it is, it, is, it is the best that we can do now as we struggling. We're going, next year we're going through a re-curriculation at the university. It's going to be a big thing. I just want to say something about that question that I answered about the 50-50. The big thing is that I believe sincerely that we shouldn't move from an exclusively white university to an exclusively black university, or from an exclusively Afrikaans university to an exclusively English university. I think any exclusivity pulls you out of the universal questions makes you no longer a university, makes you a club of same like minds. And what you need is you need that diversity, that engagement, you need to, f to fight and talk about the things that 
matters to the whole nation, not just to some in the nation. This woman from, the, um, from our side, from Freddy Cancel Slavic Institute. We'd really like to thank you for coming and engaging with us this afternoon and speaking with us. And we'd like to award you with an honorary member oh. and fellowship to the Institute. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.